Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Spry Tile. Now, Spry Tile is a tile map generator that runs directly inside of Blender. It's very similar in functionality to Crocotile that I covered about a month back, uh, but again, this one runs entirely in Blender and can be had for completely free. If you're interested in checking it out, Spry Tile is available at uh, there. <laughs> I will uh, link that down below. It's on itch.io. If you want to go ahead and grab it, just basically go to that website. Again, linked down below. Go into the download now. Uh, and you can grab it, as you can see, as an add-on for uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. I will show you the install process in just a second. The reason why we were talking about it is because Blender 2.8 version was just released. Again, this is an add-on that enables you to make tile-based maps directly in Blender. Now you can do it in Blender 2.8. Now, if you're interested in the instructions, uh, there is a full manual here with a quick start that walks you through the entire process. Unfortunately, it is very 2.79 specific, so there has been an update that is available right here. I will link this in as well. This shows you the Blender 2.8 specific stuff, although I'll be showing you most of that right now anyways, so you shouldn't need this. But if you do need additional references, I will make that available. So that is it. That is Spry Tile, a tile map editor that runs directly in Blender. Now, before we jump in, I do have to warn you, this has proven to be rather crashy for me. I don't know if it's Blender that's crashy for me, but I think it is in fact Spry Tile. So I've had a lot of crashes. Just got to warn you right up front, this guy can be a bit unstable. Stable. Hopefully that improves over time. So here we are, Blender 2.83.1. This is the LTS support version. So this should be a stable version. Here you can see our default scene. We have in it a cube. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and enable Sprite Tile. Just go into Edit, go to Preferences. That zip file that you downloaded earlier, go ahead and install it. Just go to Install, Locate it. It should be Sprite Tile add-on like so. And just double click. This will load the Sprite Tile module in place. And bum, 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 bum. give it a second should be done. It should have automatically shown up, but if it didn't, go ahead and here, go Spry Tile and click this checkbox right here. All right, Spry Tile should now be enabled. So now what we want to do is bring up our uh, our properties menu over here. You can do that by dragging it out here, or we can just hit the N key and it will pop out. And you'll notice there is now a tab for Spry Tile. Click that guy. And what we need to do, this is with an object mode. We need to set up a material, one or more add tile sets to this guy. We're just going to use one in this case. So just come in here and go to load tile set and then locate a tile set here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and load this guy. This is from Open Game Art, by the way. And now we're going to do a couple of setups. So at the drop down here, you can say make that material shaderless, uh, set up pixel texture, and set up pixel viewport. So we should be good to go now. And now all that's left to do is basically go into object mode to edit mode. So edit mode now. And you're going to notice if it's bugged out, you'll know at this point because there'll be a little display down here when we enable things. If you don't get your tile display, something crashed, you're going to have to restart Blender, unfortunately. And hopefully I don't crash during this demo because that is not the only example of bugginess that I've found. So the new thing here, and this is a major change from 2.7x to 2.8x, is the tools are now over here. We've got build, we've got paint, and we've got fill. Uh, build and paint are the ones you're going to use most of the time. Build is for creating new tile-based geometry with a tile in it. Uh, paint is painting over existing tile or faces. So you see here we have our cube here. We can start off with a simple paint. Let me just expand that down. So here we can see our tiles that we've loaded in. So I'm going to grab a selection of grass like so. So there is my painted canvas. I'm in paint mode. And now I can basically start dropping that into various different surfaces. Now, it does depend on your angle of approach, but if you're using uh, a well-defined polygon map and you just basically want to start using this for doing surfaces, you can. Obviously, I can switch things out. So let's do a dark grass one instead. And then, boom. So you can see, quickly start painting your tile-based surfaces if you so wish. Now, the cool thing is we can also do geometry. We can create new geometry out. Uh, we can have it choose to basically snap between uh, vertices or uh, the grid. Right there, got cursor flow, turn on or off, and this will automatically snap based off of where you were looking. So see, I'm slightly above, and now it's going to do a top-down tile like so. And basically, we can start drawing new geometry in our world. Completely new uh, polygons are created for us. And I could, again, go ahead and select a different set here and pop that guy in there. And then again, if I switch to a slightly more vertical angle, it's going to do that way. And at any time, by the way, I can lock it to a given axis. So if I want to just do it on the, the Z axis or the X axis, you can see accordingly, I can lock it. So as I move my uh, my viewport view around, it's not changing 
that axis. It's always drawing in that particular axis. And basically, you just start using this to draw out your world. You're drawing uh, your tiles in 3D space. You can also, again, remember when we saw earlier on, we were drawing it entirely on our image. We could have modeled your geometry completely uh, using just straight up. You don't have to do any of this creation stuff. You could have done it entirely using these tools and the paint only. And then of course we have a flood fill option. It works a little weird for me. So I'm just gonna stay away from that because I've also found it a little bit crashy. You're also gonna notice we've got different tools over here basically to say how things should paint and how they should move. So when we were creating new geometry, you'll notice we've got options. So here you see our tile currently locked to the X axis. Um, I can rotate it. You can't really tell with that selection. So let's, let's go with a boat. So you can see there I am painting a boat like so. I could go ahead, I could flip it in the Y axis and in the x-axis like so so you can see the different direction that it is painted in there like so so let's flip that not flip that and there's another one not flipped uh we've got the ability to rotate things no i didn't mean to do 360 that's not that useful so like so you can paint your tiles in different directions uh you can see the geometry is automatically being merged as it is created and yeah that's basically the idea here you can have multiple tile sets by the way you could have created or i could go back here into uh, object mode, for example, and I could add an additional tile set. Now, I don't actually have an additional tile set to show you, uh, but you can switch between them and have them available. Now, obviously, this isn't the uh, nicest looking map, but you're going to see here the geometry here is all... Um, you know, being added and merged together. That is one of the options you're going to see in edit mode. When you are in tools, you can see auto merge. And then if we go back here to object mode, you're going to see this is one single mesh. And then at any particular time, if you want, go just straight back to Blender way of doing things. I could, for example, go into blend mode. I could grab box mode and we can start moving things around and you can do fine tune edits and controls and changes, etc. It's, it's basically just building a textured polygonal mesh for you inside of Blender uh, and it is ready for export out to your game engine. So if you wanted to say this was your game level, you could basically just come here, export it out as uh, OBJ or GLTF, load that into uh, say something like the Godot engine or Unreal or Unity or whatever, and boom, you have your game level that you've created. So that is uh, Spry Tile. Now, again, I do have to warn you, it is incredible incredibly crashy for me so far. So uh, hopefully that stability gets a little bit better. But as you can see, it is integrated into uh, Blender 2.8. Again, all you do, come on in. Preferences, add the add-on in. You will locate it over here in the uh, toolbar section. Again, end to toggle, or you use this little guy over here to drag it in and out. On top of that, the tools are available over here in the toolbar. That is the T key. So over here, end key, T key. And then you'll see sprite tile, paint, fill, and build are all available there. Build creates new geometry, uh, paint uh, fills in the existing faces, and uh, fill, flood fills a uh, selection. Uh, again, in order to work with the spry tools, you have to be in edit mode, and in order to add the original textures or um, so on the tile sets to it, you have to be in object mode. And basically that is 99% of what you need to know. Now, the last thing I'm going to try to showcase is that this is actually building a material for you, but every time I click this in the past, two times out of three, I've gotten a crash. So this might be where I end the hands-on demo. Oh, no, here we go. So you can see it is actually creating a appropriate shader for you behind the scenes. So that is what some of that setup does for you. So it's ultimately bringing in your image available here and setting it up. And you can you can modify this if you want it to look different. It is using the standard shader model from uh, the Blender uh, render engine. Uh, it doesn't have all the setup requirements that there were in the Blender 2.79 install version of Spry Tile. So that is definitely a nice improvement. But I do, again, have to warn you, when I come into here, this is where I am most often experiencing a crash. And then the other thing, again, a bit of a warning, if you come back here, uh, and you find that uh, for some reason, when you go into edit mode, this, oh, I think I may have broken it. All right, let's see, I'll go to paint mode. Oh, no, I didn't break it this time. If this palette doesn't show up, the only way I have found to work around that is to restart Blender. So uh, do be aware, Spry Tile is available for Blender. You can grab it for free. Uh, I've shown you how to install it and use it, at least to make really ugly things. Uh, just do be aware that you need to... Uh, experience a few crashes, have a bit of patience. So hopefully it gets more stable over time, but it is now available for Blender 2.8X, which is definitely cool. And again, all of the documentation is going to be available um, in the uh, 
the link down below. So you want to go ahead and try it for yourself, you can. So let me know what you think of it. Obviously, as you can see from these maps, you can make some much nicer looking stuff uh, than what I did, but I did showcase at least the, the straightforward technical bits about it. Uh, I'm not sure that I would recommend using the Blender 2.8 version as of yet, uh, but it is definitely cool that's out there. And if you do try it, please do let me know. Did you have any stability issues or did it work great for you? Um, it's been two years in development, so uh, hopefully in you know, a couple more weeks and we get it there. Uh, definitely a cool project and one you should check out, especially if you're looking for this kind of uh, retro 3D effect and Blender is your tool of choice. Anyways, let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.